The Lord be with you. Six days before the Passover, when the Lord came into the city of Jerusalem, the children ran to meet him. In their hands they carried palm branches, and with a loud voice cried out, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you who have come in your abundant mercy. O gates, lift higher heads, grow higher ancient doors. Let him enter the King of glory. Who is the King of glory? He, the Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you who have come in your abundant mercy. And now for the blessing of the palms. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who, as an example of humility for the cause for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not deem equality with God something at which to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him 
and bestowed on him the name which is above every other name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to Matthew. Jesus stood before the governor, Pontius Pilate, who questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas to be, to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to be crucified. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to the place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. They gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, 
one on his right, the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, you who could destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the son of God and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and the elders mocked him and said, he saved others, he cannot save himself. So he is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now and we will believe in him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Ali, Ali, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, this one is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge, soaked it in wine and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening. And they said, truly, this was the son of God. The gospel of the Lord. We have just begun the holiest week of the year. It is a week in which our Lord was hailed as a king, was betrayed by a friend, denied by the prince of the apostles, abandoned by 11 of the 12 disciples, whipped, scourged, crowned with thorns, slapped, spat upon, and finally crucified. The greatest week in our Christian life, you ask? Yes, without a doubt, because a journey doesn't end at a cold and damp tomb. But let us remain here for the time being, throughout this entire week, here at the passion and death of Jesus. Let us pretend that we don't know that the resurrection is around the corner. It may do us well to stay in the moment, to contemplate, and meditate on Jesus' suffering. All too often, we want to jump to the end of the story. We want a happy ending. We want it all to work out. But not today, not this week. No, we stay and we feel the pain and loss. We embrace it as he did. We embrace his sadness as a friend betrays him. We embrace his disappointment as Peter denies him. We embrace his loneliness as his disciples abandon him. We will not run and hide in the resurrection. We will watch his suffering, knowing our sins crucified him, yet knowing his love redeems us and calls us to turn from sin to him alone. And we will be better people for it. As we anticipate this coming Holy Thursday and enter the Last Supper, we become his disciples. We sit at his table. We listen and try to comprehend the mystery 
which he will impart in bread and wine that become his body and blood. We will go out with him to the garden, and we will try to stay awake with him as he goes through his agony. We will stand shocked at Judas's betrayal, and we will go wondering what will happen to him and to us. We will wake the next day, Good Friday, and stand helpless as we watch with John and Mary. We will see him carry his heavy cross. We will be saddened by the jeering and tauntings of the crowds. We may be desirous to change the course of events as the nails are driven into his hands and feet and as he is scourged and our hearts will stop if only but a moment when he breathes his last. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. We will feel a mother's pain as we watch Mary uniting herself in the death of her only son. Holy Week is an opportunity to walk with Jesus, to not only remember, but to participate in his passion and death, and to enter in and let the graces he won on the cross for each and one of us soak in ever more deeply into every facet of our lives and living. If we take the time to meditate on his passion this day and this coming week, we will not only know the power of his death, but we will feel the power of his death. Then on Easter morning, we will truly know and feel the power and glory of his resurrection, for we have experienced it with him ourselves. So let us dedicate ourselves more firmly to Christ and with him. Let us immerse ourselves ever more deeply in the profound reality of this coming Holy Week, so that we too in strong faith and in love outpoured may cry out with the saints, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Take a moment of silence as we wrap our hearts and minds, the entirety of ourselves and this great mystery of our salvation with gratitude in our hearts, with sorrow over sin, but also a knowledge of his deep love and our redemption. and with growing confidence in our Savior's love for us, let us offer our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence in our Father's love for us, sending his Son to redeem us and filling us with the Spirit, 
as we look forward to this holy week, which is upon us. Let us offer these prayers to our Father in heaven. For our Holy Father Francis, Archbishop Hebda, and Bishop Cousins, may they be graced with the guidance and wisdom of the Holy Spirit as they lead the church, let us pray to the Lord. That world leaders may be helped by God in putting aside selfish agendas and seek justice and equality for the people under their care, especially in this time of worldwide pandemic. For wisdom, guidance, cooperation, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have lost their employment, those who have COVID-19, those who care for them, those on the front lines. We ask for God's provident care for them. We ask for grace in abundance. We ask for healing. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are in mourning, may they be consoled by God in their grief and made confident to the hope of the resurrection. For their loved ones, let us pray to the Lord. For all the members of this faith community of St. Gerard's for whom this Mass is being offered, may they receive the mercy of God for themselves and with his help offer it to others in prayer and in outreach. Let us pray to the Lord. That our beloved dead and those who have died may know the joy and fullness of life in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. God, our Father, we come with ever-confident hearts, knowing that you are a Father who loves us, provides for us, has sent your Son as the greatest of gifts, and fills us with your Spirit. Help us to know ourselves more deeply, that we may repent and be filled with you and give glory to your name. Hear these prayers, those spoken, and those in our hearts. For those who are watching this video, we ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now it's time for our offertory. I'd like to take this moment just briefly to thank the whole St. Gerard community for your generosity in prayer, but also for your continued financial help during these stressful times. As you know, Holy Week is a very important week, the holiest week of the year, and that far surpasses anything that I'm about to say. But your continued financial support is very important to us, and we're anxious to have you return to us so we have a full house of worshipers praying and giving and loving and receiving one another. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, you may feel already the effects of your mercy. We may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, 
Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Gerard, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, Andrew, his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Father, if this chalice cannot pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, may you lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, whom, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just as a reminder, before we pray our prayer to St. Gerard, palms, blessed palms will be distributed this Palm Sunday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the front parking lot by Father Joseph and myself. We'll have on special gloves. Just drive up, 
roll down your uh, driver's window and we'll be happy to give you blessed palms. And let us pray. O great Saint Gerard, servant of Jesus Christ, perfect imitator of your Savior and devoted son to the Mother of God, enkindle within our hearts one spark of that heavenly fire of charity which burned in your heart. O glorious Saint Gerard, because when falsely accused of crime, you did bear like your divine master without murmur or complaint, the calumnies of the wicked. By such witness, you have been raised up by God as a patron and protector of expected mothers. As our parish patron saint, preserve in us and those we love that we may see the light of the eternal day of heaven and live faithfully in this present life, the powerful, purifying, and life-giving waters of our baptismal vows through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen.